All right, welcome to episode seven. Number of, seven of the Naked Wine Podcast. Yeah. Today we have a very special guest, mm-hmm. Troy. Hello guys, how are you? Good, good. good. Thank thanks, you. Thanks, thanks for me. having me. Thank of course. you for yeah. coming. <laughs> and today we are going to chat with Troy and a little bit about what he does and his journey into the natural wine world. And we also are going to talk about orange wine. It's the orange wine episode, mm-hmm. skin contact white. You know, people will be fighting over this, but uh, we're going to call it orange wine yeah. for the yeah. sake of uh, the term that's kind of sticking. I it think. is. Yeah. It's skin contact, orange wine. They both work. And, uh, yes. you know, no oranges are harmed in the making of orange yes. wine. So that's something yes. that people need to know right we're, off the bat. Is orange. That's something <laughs> we. No oranges used to make exactly. orange wine. Exactly. Orange. Oranges have nothing to do with right. orange wine. Um, the best way, I think, just for anybody out there who's wondering what orange wine is, if you don't know, it's pretty simple. It's wine made from white grapes, um, but the skins are on uh, when the wine is made. Therefore, it kind of has that orange color. So, for instance, white wine is uh, wine from white grapes without the skin. Orange wine from white grapes with the skin. Rosé from red grapes without the skin or very little. And then red wine from red grapes with the skin. And there you have it. Yeah. And we'll get into that, kind of dive deeper into that a little bit tonight, but keep it, you know, kind of for the layman. So it's kind of easy to understand. Mm-hmm. It's, you can get pretty deep and nerdy with it, or and uh, you know you start talking to some advanced psalms and stuff, no. and it can get very nerdy. Yeah, we like mm-hmm. to keep but it high level yeah, here. Yeah, thirty-five thousand <laughs> feet here. Yeah, yes. absolutely. I'm with you. Good. Awesome. Perfect. Well, this is exciting. Well, let's jump right into it. Sure. Well, I want I want to hear a little bit quick about the guests that we have. Troy, do you want to like give us your like give us the Troy spiel? How'd you get into wine and tell us a quick, a uh, sure. little bit about Alley Bile. Yeah. So Alluvial is a distribution company that I represent, um, based here in California in the Bay area, uh, started in the city of San Francisco and Oakland and kind of that whole, you know, the Bay bridge yeah. kind of area at first. And then in the, uh, 2000 and I'd say 15 or 16, about three or four years into it, they moved down to the LA area as well. Okay. Cool. Um, so in the last couple of years, uh, we've grown pretty substantially in terms of the amount of sales reps we have. All right. That's the best way to kind of gauge a distribution company is how many reps do you have? How they're, so, how yeah, they're doing and yeah, faring in the market. Right. How you, you know, kind of divvy up your territory, okay. so to speak. And uh, we went from a couple here in L.A. to I think we're up to eight or nine now. Really? Amazing. We've got three in San Diego oh, wow. and, and probably another eight or nine in NorCal. So, And you handle primarily? I, like- I go like basically Venice to Long Beach. So, And I live in here in Hermosa Beach where we're filming right now. So nice. I get, yeah. I'm kind of smack dab in the middle of my territory. And That's I'm, perfect. It's perfect for me. It's an ideal world. And yeah. <laughs> for a while there, I was doing Hollywood and downtown, yeah. which is a great neighborhood. I love, yeah. you know, L.A. in general. But. You know, those traffic hours were starting oh, to Oh, yeah, me, like so. pre-pandemic. Oh, like, might as well be oh. flying to Vegas. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. I mean, the amount of time it would take, you know, my gosh, I, I could have drove Vegas. 100%. Yeah, you could have. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, happy to be, you know, more rooted here in the neighborhood that I live in now and where I've grown up. Nice. Uh, I am a Los Angelino, born and raised here in the it's South. Rare. Area. Yes. It's rare. Very rare. It is. From rare find. All over the country <laughs> yeah. and world. Local, yeah. call ourselves local natives, you know? Yeah. 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 So nice. Happy to, uh, you know, rep the South Bay and rep LA in general. And um, the book is, is really fun. We have wines from Europe. We have wines from California, Oregon, and Washington. Love and it. And then we have wines from the Southern Hemisphere. So Chile, yeah. Argentina, New Zealand, and, and uh, Australia. I'm drinking so, a lot of Chilean. Chilean yeah, wines yeah. are great. Uh, value wine. Yeah. You know, you can get really high quality wine and, you know, for your retail cost would be 25 bucks or less, which is where you want to be. Totally. You know? Yeah. Totally. Not everybody, good bang for your buck. Good bang totally, for your it, buck. Yeah. Kind of like discovering that next Beaujolais region, for instance, yeah. like when Burgundy and Bordeaux was through the roof and you really like French wines, finding that Loire yes. or Languedoc or Beaujolais, right. but I feel like Southern Hemisphere is kind of next. Southern on the Hemisphere docket. is great. Um, mm-hmm. Over in Europe, I really like Greek wine a lot. Mm. I like Portuguese mm. wine a lot. Uh, the problem is that their grapes can be kind of hard to pronounce. Yeah, and yes. so it's it, not the familiar. It's not familiar. Cab Sauv, yeah, French varietals or even Spanish or Italian, you know, Sangiovese or Tempranillo that we all kind of know. Um, but if you can kind of get past the name, they're more in the German wine level. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and and even, like, or even high, even crazier. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the Greek uh, yeah. wine varietal names are like, whoa. Uh, yeah. I, mean, I just will show the camera and show the person. I'm yeah, like, they're like try. six, gonna... seven syllable names, and you're just like, whoa, what the heck? But when you get past that, you just pull the cork and drink it. They're yeah. just so inviting and food friendly and mm, totally. easy to drink and you know, really well made. And 
so yeah, those are some of the places that I really like. And uh, yeah, so it's been a lot of fun uh, enjoying the, uh, you know, pandemic kind of uh -huh. uh, idea of working in the market. It's been more retail kind of oriented. Totally, because usually you're what? Um, wine shops, restaurants, bars? Correct. Okay. Yeah, we don't really sell to uh, grocery stores. If we do, it might be like a Bristol Farms or yeah. okay. uh, Lazy Acres or mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah. But even then, it's, you know, just a couple of SKUs. We're not doing our entire book. So what you see from us is going to be more for your mom and pop you know, like a Barsha here in Manhattan Beach yeah. or Uncorked yeah. here in Hermosa Beach. But uh, yeah. But as the bars and restaurants took a huge hit, wine yeah, shops we, on the other wine hand shops like, went through yeah, yeah. through the, the roof. Scale right? was nuts. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah. So Everybody our, needed their wine and yeah. more more than usual. <laughs> yes. I mean people drink when they're happy or sad. Yes. You know? sure. So uh, <laughs> it's just a question of how you get that vehicle into your mouth. Yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah so <laughs> yeah, I Make read, it I read some have it, right? stat like <laughs> wine sales and wine shops was up thirty percent March, April twenty twenty over March, April, 2019. I think it so. might've been more like 70. Okay. Oh my God. Yeah, it was, it was wild. So we might've contributed to that. It's yeah. your guys' fault. <laughs> Thank you actually. Everyone <laughs> this. But no, seriously, it, it was too. a sliding scale. I mean, as restaurants started to shut down, you know, because of the pandemic, you know, wine sales for, you know, on off premise or retail yeah. you know, mm. on the exact same sliding line on yeah. the graph. So, yeah, you really know, it, it, it changed our focus and in a way it kind of made us better. I love because, that. Yeah, because you kind of had to take a step back and think about where you need yeah. to be. And get creative. Get creative. Yeah. Yeah. And so once we get out of this, you know, SHIT storm we're in, yep. I believe I that. see the light. Yeah, there's going to be more accounts. There's going to be, you know, uh, more people to call on. And, and we've kind of grown. So, you know, uh, knock on wood, things are, things are all right. Well, that nice. is so good yeah. to hear. Thank you. I love yeah. it. Happy Let's... to be here. And, uh, yeah, we can kind of dive into uh, what have you guys in. got. Let's touch on a couple more for people who aren't super familiar with orange wine, mm. we cover some of the basics. Not yeah. made from orange juice. Not no, from orange juice. No, no fruit at all. From um, the white for grape. Grapes. It from is the white grape. like rosé is to red as mm -hmm. white is to orange wine. Very, yep. very good uh, analogy. Definitely. And you were telling us it kind of like thousands of years, kind of dates so back like to like to Georgia. Georgia. Yes. So uh, Georgia is a country, also the state in the south. Yeah. There, there is the former USSR when they broke up and Russia mm -hmm. became Russia. There was all these little factions that created their own country and Georgia is a fairly new country. Okay. But as a society or a civilization, it dates back tens of thousands of years, you know, to the caveman era. Yeah. And um, we believe that 8,500 years, the first grapes were fermented and turned into alcohol. Yeah. And they were found underground in clay pots yep. or amphora in Georgia, in, Georgia. In, the, nice. in the country of Georgia. So it's called the cradle of wine. Yeah, Ooh, it's the cradle the, of wine. Like the cradle of civilization is yeah. considered Mesopotamia. Okay. That's the cradle debatable, of wine but is, whatever. Yeah. yeah, but the cradle of wine, to the best of our knowledge through excavation and science. Present day. Present day. Country of Georgia. 8,500 years ago. Not Atlanta. Not, <laughs> not Atlanta. No, exactly. Not Atlanta. Um, well, it's interesting because I grew Little up. moonshine. Yeah. <laughs> I grew up in Azerbaijan, which is one of those little countries. There you go. Um, that became is that pretty close to Georgia? It yes. was Georgia. Oh, wow. So yeah. I've been to Georgia cool. many times. I've had wine from their little their clay, their yes. little clay pups Quiveries that and they there. Them in. Yeah, right. And wow. it's delicious. And it is very delicious. We used to carry one. Um, hopefully we get it back. You know, these things change a lot in our industry. Yep. But um, for many years, Georgian wine was made for your neighbors and for your family. So yeah. you would make your own Georgian wine. Okay. But you wouldn't sell it. You would just give it away to yeah. your the community. And, yeah, it's community wine. So I can get some of theirs and trade, yeah, trade, trade it off there. and talk okay. shop and everything. And only recently has Georgia decided that they have something that's worthy mm -hmm. of exporting. Yeah. So you're starting to see more and more of it actually leaving the country and becoming more marketable. Yeah. They're putting really cool labels on it. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Yes. You know, so. The I've Georgian noticed, labels are so cool. They are. They have this Russian kind of like mm -hmm. Moscow. Uh, it's very different than yeah. – it's not quite like – the super natty California stuff no. is like your six year old drew a, a crayon, crayon painting. No, and yeah. some of the Georgia it stuff doesn't is look like, like a Jackson Pollock. No. <laughs> right, hundred percent. It, it has a little bit more history. It's not yeah. the always the chateaus like old school France, but it's somewhere in between where it's got this. It yeah, more, I would say that's a good it call. It looks more like like a vodka label. Like yes, some of the vodka they do. Labels what's from, the like, uh, what's the the capital uh, or the, the the building in Georgia in uh, Moscow that 
Oh, the Kremlin. The Kremlin. Yeah, 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 you know those spirals? Yes. Yep. You the see turrets, that? Yeah, yeah, or like It's a Small World at Disneyland. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They kind of have that kind of vibe on the label. Which totally. Is kind of cool. That's so, so cool. Very indicative of, of the uh, place, you know, so really Amazing. cool stuff. But yeah, so the, the marketability of orange wine really is fairly new, mm-hmm. but the style has been around since the beginning. And basically all it is, is like you were saying, mm-hmm. you take your white wine grape, any white wine grape that you can think of, there they have their own indigenous you know, yeah. styles that we can get into. But you just leave it on the skin. So yeah. when you take the grape and you crush it, there is juice that is made. And in more recent times, especially in the last 50 or 60 years, you would separate the juice from the skins right away. Right. And not so let the, it have that time to rest on the skins at exactly. all. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And so what happens is you get that nice pale yellow color that we mm-hmm. think of when we see Pinot Grigio or Blanc, Chardonnay, Chardonnay, Chardonnay Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah. Right. But for millenniums, you would actually leave the skins in contact with the juice. And then even white wines have tannins. Yeah, so in the, the, skin, in the, the skins. In the skins. Yeah. yeah, so you would get more savory notes, a little bit more grip. Totally. Um, and it would impart flavor as well, along with the color. Yeah. So, but, you know, uh, Chardonnay. The longer you leave it on the skins. The maybe more the, color you get. The more color yeah. you yeah, get. And the more savory notes and the more grip and tannin as well. Okay. And in the 50s, Chardonnay and Sauvignon Blanc really kind of caught on. And mm-hmm. Pinot Grigio is the grape that kind of had to figure out what they wanted to do. So... Uh, winemakers that made Pinot Grigio from Italy or Pinot Gris from France mm. decided that in order to kind of get into that market, they decided to free run their juice right away and separate it from the skins. When in actuality, Gris or Grigio means gray okay. in, in Italian or French, depending on where the grape is grown. So they're not really a white wine grape. They're a gray grape. So when you see them on, on the vine, they have this pinkish gray really? color to them. Huh. And so you gotta take a tour. I know, yeah. we do. Yeah. So when you see oh. gris, that's what's what that's what the word means. Okay. And so in order to make Grigio more palatable, more marketable, they free run it right away. And so it had this, you know, golden straw color that we know of it today. Yeah. Yeah. But now that, you know, in most things, pop culture, what is old is new again. Totally. Oh, yeah. The <laughs> Pinot Gris. Coca shell necklaces are coming back. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, oh, oh, no. Uh. Please, no. <laughs> I was into that for a Me little too. while. When I was <laughs> <in the time. laughs> yeah. This will awesome. be Furbies. Yeah, yeah, Furbies, Chia right? pets. Chia pets. Yeah. yeah, there we go. I heard cassette tapes are making a comeback. Oh, like, yeah. What? oh yeah. I saw a DVD. <laughs> no, not even DVD. A VHS Hurt Disney Hercules on the streets of San Francisco. The other day, I'm like, what is that doing on the ground? I'm like, that's like an antique. That probably yes. goes for money on eBay. Put the, it in a museum. The, the, the Disney VHSs, if you keep them in mint condition, sell for like tens of thousands of dollars. That's- yeah. Crazy. Which is wild because we all had them when we were kids. I yes, know. and, yeah. and yes. they're trash. We use them as we coasters. Threw, yeah. When we would take the VHS <laughs> so, out, we'd use them as like coaster a coaster for mom. Yeah, yeah. and a projectile <laughs> missile to throw at your friends, like <laughs> mess around in the basement. Yeah, okay. Anyway, tangent uh, back. To yeah, no, that was a good. That was a good, uh, good tangent, everybody. Nicely done. Uh, but yeah, no, it's just you know what what is old is new again, and yeah. so now you know people want to see what these skin contact wines are all about. The name orange wine really is fairly new. To the best of my knowledge, there was a sommelier in London that coined huh. the phrase okay. about a dozen years ago or so, maybe a I little mean, longer. Look, he looked looks, at it and went, it looks hmm, orange. I'll call it Astute. orange wine. Right. Astute. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. Good job. Uh, I, I forget the guy's name, but anyway, he's kind of created this trend and, and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Oh, yeah. yeah. And the more people enjoy it and try it, the more you know it's going to be around, which I think is a good thing. Um, Wine is supposed to be fun, and and you it's know you're also to kind of like look for new ways to kind of reinvent the, reinvent. the wheel. Yeah, yeah so. and it's I mean, and to that degree of it kind of coming back, and I think what what helps orange wines case into like I mean, it's been around for millennium, like you said, but what what helps it in recent times is how versatile it is for pairing wines. Oh, yeah. like Super great versatile. because Food it has some yes. acidity. It has a little structure from the tannins. It doesn't over necessarily overpower anything you're eating. You can pair it with like burger, charcuterie, yeah. seafood. Oh, like food it, pairing yeah. is fantastic. It's yeah. a great call. It's a great uh, food pairing wine. Pizza, burgers, uh, you know, carne asada here in LA. Yeah, we love, love to do yeah, yeah, Mexican yeah. food. Great with Mexican food. Oh yeah, you know, orange, food. orange wine and some like street tacos. Yes, I mean, all day. That sounds we, grilling in the backyard. You know, we're not talking about you know yeah, prime prime steaks here, but. Yeah. You know, you're more quicker, you know, over the grill kind of things. Yeah. Totally. Thai food, 100%. Well, another interesting thing is for any listeners out there, if you're like me or how more I used to be and you're more of, I, just, I like red wine, white wine's not my favorite. 
orange wine might be more your jam because kind of the way it's made is more in the style of red wine and you are going to have like you said more of that some structure, tannins, some structure. Some tannins, we some call tannins. it grip or tannins grip, yeah. yeah all that means is just that prickly feeling on your tongue when you're uh -huh. drinking wine it's a little more yeah. mouthfeel more than... mouthfeel and that comes from the skin so yes. red wine has tannins because right. your typical red wine will stay in contact with the skins for 30 days or longer that's why, you know, Cabernet looks the color that it does. It's got this yeah. beautiful red color because it's on the skins for so long before they separate the pulp and the seeds and the skins and, you know, start to, you know, kind of filter it out. And like, when you think about it, like a very small percentage of red wine grapes are dark and red inside. Mm -hmm. no. Like if you didn't leave it on the skins, it would, look, yeah. it would yeah. look almost like a white wine. Well, it's like, you, you know, you feed your kids or yourself like a Thompson yeah. grape from the grocery so, store. Yeah. Same kind of pulp. Yeah. yeah, you yeah. bite it in half. It's not red inside. It's, yeah, it's, it's like the skins that give it the green. color. It's the skins that give it the well, color. Well, I feel yeah. like yeah. my mouth is watering. Maybe yeah. we should oh, have yeah. some wine. Let's hop into it. <laughs> Troy <laughs> brought oh, you us read my mind. <laughs> a lovely treat. We're talking about it, and I'm like, ooh, I want some of that. We have a couple bottles here. So we'll talk about the winemakers, and we'll yeah. try the wine. I, I would Let's love that. It. So we'll kind of Yeah, the show the camera. show for YouTube here. There we yeah. go. So Tell this is Tessier is the winery. The... uh grape is chardonnay actually and as you can see she actually wrote skin contact on the label so you know that this is not your mother's chardonnay uh -huh. and uh she puts the vintage 2020 and then she tells you where it was farmed um nice. which is in camino alto which i believe is in el dorado um she actually takes the grapes from el dorado which is near um it's actually in the sierra foothills as you go towards um Lake Tahoe. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so higher elevation, you know, like probably 2000 feet or more, which gives it a little bit more of a diurnal swing, which just means that it's a little colder at night, hot during the day, but colder at night, which helps to keep the acidity and the freshness yeah. of grapes. If it's too hot and it stays hot all night long, then you get really Over sugary, sugary overripe, yeah. you know, high alcohol wines, which is not my favorite thing to drink. No. For some people they do like that, but not for me. But um, it was a fun thing for her to do. She did all stainless steel aging on this. There's no oak. So when okay. you think of your traditional Chardonnay, you think of white burgundy. Yeah. Oh, and it's which, a skin contact shard. Yeah. You Tessier think of, skin contact 2020. Yes. Um, Tessier. Yeah. So we should probably talk about her a little bit. So Christy is the winemaker. Christy Tacey is her last name, but her roots go back to France. She's actually a nice. Michigan native. Um, but Tacey, uh, Shout at out some to point, the Midwest, yeah, I'm Midwest, from Minnesota. Minnesota. <laughs> yeah. yeah, all right, there you go, a little Big Ten football action here. <laughs> That's right. Um, so yeah, her family roots go back to France, and the name was Tessier, so it's an homage to her lineage. Yeah, no lineage of winemaking, but just in the lineage to. Mm. If I French. had French lineage, in if I was in the wine industry, <laughs> I was kind of real. I, I, I Germans make wines, so I can. I go. got a shot. She loves French grapes too. She only deals with French grapes, so cool. uh, Grenache, Morvet. Red Syrah, Pinot Noir on the red yeah. side, uh, Pinot Gris, uh, Chardonnay, Riesling on the white side. So everything she does is just French varietals. All grown here in California, and she takes those grapes and she trucks them from whatever sourcing she has back to her crush facility in uh, Hillsburg. Which is, which is in Sonoma. Thank you. And that, um, if you had listened to episode six before this with mm -hmm. Ronica from Lincoln Fine Wines, I like ran out of the room and grabbed this super cool looking bottle that I just like felt so oh, solo in, yeah solo yes. yeah it's another one of tessier's one i it said is. it looks like a Katy perry song in a bottle yeah, you did you she, <laughs> she actually has a quite a musical kind of connotation oh, to all the winemaking so if you pull a cork and you go on her website uh she has a soundtrack for every wine she makes oh, i love that yeah. amazing kendra being the musician yes. at the table yes that's right up her alley so, so this is all stainless steel age as i was saying you know your typical chardonnay from you know uh Chablis or from Burgundy will have some barrel aging on it. Yeah. And then also here in California, um, she decided to go all stainless steel as just a way to really let you know this is not going to be like your typical Chardonnay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then she left it on the skins for, I don't know if she says on the back label here, but at least it's a, a, it's a 2020. So it was like, you at know. least a couple days. I would say probably in the neighborhood of three to five days. It's not like, times. and for this, it's not like a 
dark, deep hued orange. That's why yeah. I brought it. I wanted yeah. you guys yeah. to see that orange wine does not have does to not be the have color to be orange. orange. Like I could, you can this see is, the color. This is like a pale yellow. I right. could see this and potentially not think that it had yeah, skin totally. contact. Which is why she was very uh, adamant to put it on the front label, so you know this is not going to be. And she's like in the skin yes. contact camp, not yes. the orange wine. Camp. Yeah. Right, right, <laughs> but exactly. Hey, but she's more. She's a winemaker, and that's kind of. A more technical it, term it is it. and the reason why and that's a great segue by you um if you really want to get deep into skin contact versus orange wine there is a difference to be traditionally orange wine you should be uh fermented in amphora mm. okay and okay. that is clay clay or amphora yeah. is the same thing it's porous oxygen gets in right it does take on an oxidative kind of quality which um tends to make wine a little bit more yeah. kind of funky and a lot of the Georgian wines yes. have yes. a little totally. bit of that oxidative like sherry-esque quality it's that because I, they're done of. in amphora gotcha. it smells it smells delicious yeah right off the nose i got like some citrus peels of different i mean i'm you're definitely have tasted a lot more wine than we have over, over the time it's interesting because i got a little right off the right off the bat i got a little bit of like a a funky kind of baking bread smell for a second there. Yeah, you might get some of that bready kind yeah. of yeasty, especially when you first pull a cork on a brand new bottle. Uh, that tends to blow off. Um, mm -hmm. I'll be honest, my nose oh, is a little wow. cold, so my my, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my olfactory is yeah, sure. uh, not really there right now. But on the it's palate, delicious. on the palate, mm. it's definitely the skin contact and the stainless steel really lets the juice kind of be the star, mm -hmm. and the skin contact definitely oh, adds some grip. Oh yeah, that's and it's got great acidity. Great acidity. Great acidity. It's not like a buttery sharp. No. It doesn't have that oak. Great Correct. acidity, but it tickles your tongue in all the right places. Yes, it does. Yeah. It fills up your mouth. Like this there, would. There's and, a savory brothy kind of quality to this is. as well that almost has like an umami kind of thing yeah. going yeah. on. Yeah, like a bone broth. That's a bone great broth way. or like yeah. a ramen kind yeah. of. Thing. Very few yeah. white totally. wines I've ever had have had like an umami quality. Right, and that's mm. just that, adding the skins. Totally right. You know, really? it just it okay. just just gives it that kind of texture and. I love it. Yeah, I know it's so I mean, delicious. This would pair spi any spicy food. Any spicy, spicy food, food for sure. It'd be so good. Yeah, Mexican food, Thai food, which are really prevalent here in the LA even area, just, and even just a, some nice sharp cheese would be so. Oh yeah, this is a perfect. Perfect charcuterie yeah. wine. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. That's delicious. delicious. Cause it'll cut through salami and it'll cut through the cheese and yeah. kind of, you know, um, yeah. cleanse your palate for the next sip. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. It, could, wow. hand, it yeah. could handle a sharp cheddar. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it could. 100%. Have you have you been up there to uh, the tasting room or to meet? Uh, to, uh, she, does not have a, she does not have a tasting room. So Christy um, actually used to be a scientist on okay. the Human Genome Project. Wow. Yeah. So she just uh, started her 11th or 12th vintage. So she's fairly new in the game. Um, but she's like a definite like skyrocket star in our industry. Cool. We're very lucky to have her in our book. And, um, you know, yeah. she, she's the type of person you want to invest in because you can tell she's going places, you know. Yeah. She's up to probably twelve or 1,300 case production at this point, maybe a little higher. Tw is that is that pretty? I mean, For I honestly particular... don't know. It's, it's it's still very small. Okay. okay. You know, when you put it in terms of like the commercial brands. Yeah, not the safe, the safe way. That's the next level. Millions like, and millions. Yeah. For a low intervention, minimal intervention. It's still small. Warming. Okay. Yeah. Like she doesn't have a tasting room. She does some direct to consumer. She does have a couple of different markets outside of California. New York for sure. I think uh, in the Midwest, like maybe Illinois and Chicago. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to show the cork to the people online. You can see she gives a little homage to her past with a uh, microscope yeah, the, here. The, oh, there's yeah. a little microscope awesome. on yeah. the board. So she does take her love of science and put it into her winemaking. Uh, winemaking is science. It is, like, very much so. To, you can't just... She even talks a little bit about it on the back okay. of the You know, she talks about uh, the alcohol by volume, which you're supposed to have, obviously. Right. Yeah, but, but to she the talks exact... about the pH and she talks... Oh, the bricks about, levels. Yeah, the bricks, which is cool. Which is like, essentially, in layman's terms, like the sugar levels in the grapes when they're picked. Correct. Okay. The sugar levels in the grapes when they're picked. And that will allow a winemaker to kind of gather how much alcohol by volume a wine is going to have versus acidity. Yes. Nice. Sugar and acid are, you know, very big, important components. Basically, wine for, if you're not quite sure, yeast is a naturally occurring element yeah. that is on our skin and our clothes. It's all around us. Or you Science can buy commercial is, yeast, and that ooh. will eat the sugar in the juice and yeah. create alcohol. We're, we're huge fans of the native yeast here. Yeah. She's all native Just yeast. Like, love that. And I love her little saying science as art. Right. That's so cool. it's, it's kind of a cool juxtaposition in that she is a scientist, and she does like to take you know copious notes, and she's very particular when she picks the grapes, and she's you know jotting down things, and she yeah. keeps her ledger. But at the same time, she's very hands-off. She yeah. just wants to pick the grapes, 
I crush love the it. grapes and let the juice and the terroir speak for and her. She sounds so. like my kind of lady. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's I would wonderful. like to meet her. <laughs> oh, yeah. So when um, she comes down, we'll have to uh, catch up. Yeah, yeah. Be, yeah it'd awesome. be phenomenal. She comes to LA, uh, you know, outside of, okay. you know, coronavirus, she'll come yes. down a couple times a year. Totally. So mm-hmm. I see, this might be a little tangent, but I see that it has a certified vegan yeah. stamp on there. I was wondering yes. about that too. And I, we know it's on becoming... previous episodes, we've touched on like the different fining agents mm-hmm. and Correct. such. So I, maybe you know a little bit more. There like, is. What there... does that mean? And that might surprise people. Like, they're like my my wine isn't inherently vegan like yes for so, many many centuries you know part of the process of making wine to be more clear outside of your typical filtration is fining and it just helps to kind of separate you know uh some of the particles and the yeast and things like that to create a, a clear you know mm-hmm. overall product in the glass or in the or in the bottle um and egg whites and like some fish mm-hmm. yeah what is it called used. um i just read about it recently in not insulin but it I, is in glass is in glass yeah. which is a f- uh, f- it's derived from fish bladder Bladders. fish yeah. bladder yeah. fish bladder right it's, like that. it's a finding <laughs> agent it's a finding agent yeah right? um and so it is still used but not very often so most of your wines are vegan but she did go the extra step and got her wine certified and got the sticker on the back That's label good. is there anything the else like is it just the finding agents that would make it vegan or non-vegan? As far as I know. Maybe the harvesting, the way they harvest it. <laughs> well, no, if you really want to go into... <laughs> if they got bugs they and got birds, birds yeah. in there birds for machine harvesting. Hand harvesting versus machine uh-huh. harvesting, definitely. Yeah. You know, you've seen some horror stories, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, Probably rare, but yeah. Yeah, that's why you want to kind of stick with smaller batch wine. Because totally. yeah. you're going to be a lot more aware. Picked with love. Picked with love. I mean, anybody yeah. that's gone, like, in the Midwest, like, berry picking is a big thing. And apple picking. Yeah. Like... Mm-hmm. If you go to a berry bush in, in August um, and, and you were just to shake it and like, harvest everything that was on the bush, you would get a mix spiders of bumblebees, and, yeah. spiders, yeah. underripe berries, ripe berries. And I'm sure they pick some of that out, but like, you know, it's different than when you're going there and hand picking the best. And yes. you can, you know, you can test the bricks levels and, and, and so forth. Oh, 100%. Um, yeah. And so machine hand harvesting, you know, there's definitely something be, to say about smaller anything, you know, whether it's the clothes you yeah. wear, yeah. The, the wine you drink, the food you're sourcing. It's all kind of the same. We're all talking about, you know, 21st century living and how do we get back to what's true. Yeah. And go we see find everybody. small winemakers. They're the ones that are actually totally. paying attention the most. You know, yeah. they're not they need the most love. They need the most like, love too. The most support. She, they yeah. put in so much. She's work. owner operated. You know, this is oh, her wow. brand. She has no she's, partners. She is just straight up. Oh, and the other thing that's kind of cool about her, she's definitely a 21st century modern uh, lady in that she decided to wait until March 1st to release all of her 2020 vintages because that's day one of International Women's Month. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I love so, March. Yeah, so yeah, that was just this past week. Yeah, yeah just this past week. So we've been sitting on this wine for about two weeks. And can we, can we can pull we it, it now? Can, can we, we do, do it, it now? Yeah, and everyone's it. been waiting. It is kind of a cool thing. So Wow, so this is like new. Brand I remember when we were new. talking about this episode, this wow. just worked perfectly. That yes. You represent a lot of orange wines. Mm-hmm. You were having you a do. bunch of new uh, releases with Simmer yeah, Producers Tessier. And so here we are drinking them. My, uh, maybe it's the fact that it's just kind of opened up and, um, you know, it's been uh, pulled, the cork's been pulled for about 10 minutes, but I'm getting like Fuji apple. Yeah, I agree. Um, it's getting more fruity now. It is. Yeah, the nose is definitely a coming more out. more fruity. So it has a little umami quality. Yes. Good acidity. It's not, it's and tannin you know, level. It's it, just a little. But so, probably because it has just a light amount of skin contact. Yeah, and you can kind of see it's a little murky in the bottle too. That's yeah, the un, unfining and unfilter. It's just another way of kind of keeping your wine natural. Yes. But the sediment will still settle because it's gravity. Yeah. So you can rack wine. There's things you can do to still keep like particles out. And I kind of yeah. When it has it, I kind of like gently yeah. shake my bottle. Mind yeah. getting a little bit of that. We no, kinda, the, we like it. The, 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 that stuff <laughs> That's how is we get actually, our vitamins. Yeah, I was just gonna say it's got some good qualities. <laughs> really? There's some people okay. in France that will take that and they will put it on uh-huh. toast and eat it like pate. Yep. I mean the yeast. 100. I call them the yeast chips on yeah, the bottom. Chips, like yeah. <laughs> they're not the tastiest, but I do it. Yeah. Like okay, <laughs> that's next level. All right, <laughs> spreading your yeast chips. On you guys are you guys are hardcore. I like. We want to live to be a hundred too and drink wine every day. So that's our genius. Plan. I hate to dump, but uh, well, I want to move on to. This yeah, 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 for sure. No, no, no. Right, you can do it yeah. over the well, side there. Yeah, as well. Not on the hammock, but. So in, in this one, starkly one different in too. color. Yeah, so kind of cool. That's why I brought these two in particular, just so you can see what orange wine can can mean as far as color. I mean, just look at the stark difference between these yeah. two. Yeah, you can show the YouTube there, and then yeah. uh, 
describe over here so that we get good sure. audio? Yeah. yeah. So for the people listening, um, the next one we brought is almost like a, a garnet color. Mm -hmm. It almost looks rosé yeah. from here. Like, like a burnt a orange. Burnt orange. Burnt yeah. orange. Garnet, ruby maybe. Yeah. Between a, like yeah. a ruby grapefruit. Like the, the grapefruit on that ruby red grapefruit juice yeah. in the store. And this wow. is, like we were talking about earlier, this is a Pinot Gris. Yeah. So, okay. So once again, gris means gray in French, or grigio means gray in Italian. It's the same grape, just grown in two different parts of Europe. And then over the years, it has been brought over to the United States and is now grown here in California and other parts of you know the new world, as we like to call it as well. Yeah. So this is uh, from Two Shepherds, which is another mm -hmm. darling in the natural wine world. You'll see uh, their brands all over Los Angeles from downtown to Hollywood to the wow. west side to the South Bay. This is our first time I tasting know. both the, both these brands. I know. Yeah. I and can tell. the label is so cute on this one. It's got a little a little black donkey and a little white donkey. Yes. And they're kind of cuddling. It's yes. so cute. They are actual uh, animals that the owners own. They have a farm. Work. Here's their faces on the back too. Yeah. Oh. They have a farm um, at their property, which I visited. Dolce and Sophia. Yes. They're Sicilian <laughs> miniature donkeys. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Because these two, it's uh, Karen and his, uh, or, I'm sorry, William and his partner Karen. They are the uh, team behind Two Shepherds. And on their property, they have many animals and chickens and goats and donkeys. And I take my kids there. And You do? Oh, yeah. They, and the where, where is their vineyard at again? Uh, they're, they actually have a small estate vineyard associated with their home. Which is in Sonoma wow. in a little town. Uh, I want to say Windsor. No, Windsor is where they're. Let's see. Yeah, when I think well, produced and bottled by Two Shepherds, Windsor, California. Windsor is where their crush facility is. Um, gotcha. Their home is in another neighborhood, which is in Sonoma, right there. In yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Valley floor. Cool. But yeah, it's a really cool spot. I like to take my kids, let them run around with the animals, and then you know we're sipping it wine. It's, it is heavenly. I love yeah. it. I love the sentiment on the back. Life on the farm is good. Hee haw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've never read that before. Yeah, it's, just, it's phenomenal. <laughs> I mean, hi. How much more mom and pop like yes. can yeah. you get than that? Like the, those are those, those are, are the people I want making my wine. <laughs> yeah. You do, you really do, um, and you know they they care. You know it's it's yeah. a really cool company. They do have a tasting room, so if anybody listening or watching at home gets up to Sonoma, look up two shepherds. You can visit them. Cool. Oftentimes, William and yeah. Karen are there pouring for you. I'm up there so, a lot. Yeah, so give them a shout. Um, yeah, so we'll kind of dive into this particular bottle here. So mm -hmm. this is Pinot Gris. Five days of skin contacts. And once again, uh, you crush the grapes and you put them in big vats where you leave them in contact with the pulp, the seeds, the skins. Let that uh, color of the skins bleed off into the juice. Mm -hmm. And then five days later, you get this really pretty garnet. I mean, just ruby. after five days, five you days. get this wow. really Beautiful, gorgeous garnet color. ruby. If you're, at home, ruby. if you're at home and you're online, uh, you know, Google Pinot Gris. Look it up and look for a picture of a bunch on a vine. Yeah. You know, the, the wow. grape bunch will have this pretty pink gray color to it. So it's really not a white wine. Um, oh my goodness. Call, it it's smells, like a gray wine. Yeah. It smells oh, wow. so it, fruity. Yeah, it almost delicious. looks like a red grape to it me. Does, like yeah. I would, purplish, but they, they kind of purplish, the little gray. gray. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. I get a little bit of tea, like steep tea leaves. Very much so. Tea is definitely something that they talk about on the Really? Time. Oh, yeah. yeah. At home. We just uh, we just black pulled tea. a cork with yeah, them. Black tea. We just pulled a cork with uh, Karen and, and William at their house last week. Actually, oh, I was up there. Right. I guess it was two weeks ago now. Oh, delicious! Yeah, definitely like some mm -hmm. black tea or some herbal some... tones in there, but also just smelled amazing. Yes, um, I agree with the tea notes. Tropical fruits, too. definitely some tropical yeah. fruits. Um, once again, it's a little chilly, so my nose will warm up, <laughs> but. Uh, on the palate, it's also great. It's mm, just, it's so a 2020. Good. So 2020 means that, you know, wow. this, these wines were just picked, or these grapes were just picked and harvested six months ago. So these are meant to be mm. consumed fresh and young. Um, I don't know if he does any barrel aging on this. Let's see. Yes. So William does like to do neutral barrel aging on most of his wines, if not okay. all. Um, but neutral versus new. Yeah. yeah. Um, neutral just means that they have been through four or five or six years or more. Of of, ho of basically hosting uh, grapes. Or yeah. juice. Is that a in the, is that mainly five or six years of previous wines yes. in the same barrel? Okay. Yeah. So okay. the barrel will be more of a vessel, and you yeah. get that the oak flavor yes. kind of imparted onto the grapes. It's just mm -hmm. more of a of a vessel to kind of house. Yeah, the and I know 
oak usage in the natural wine world is a little bit debatable. I mean, I'm definitely a fan of some oak. I'm definitely team oak, but not <laughs> over oak. Correct. I used to sell American oak whiskey barrels for two years. Wow. I sold to some Minnesota wineries too. Um, but I mean, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's interesting. A little bit goes a long way and over oaked is you just get all oak and it, Honestly, so it a little bit goes a long way. I think that's a perfect way to describe it. And so for him, he just really wants it to be a vessel, a little bit of oak, but you know, nothing more than just a way to kind of. You don't want let, it. To, you want the terroir and the juice to share. Yeah, yeah. And that's really what he's love trying that. To do. Love yeah. that. Well, I have to say, it tastes very different than than kind of what you get on the nose. It's so poppy and lively. Yeah, it's definitely like and higher juicier. acidity. Juicy. I would say, like yes. a little juicier. It made my mouth pucker a little. I get like a yeah. sweet tart. You know, like 100%, a sweet tart. Yeah. You get, delicious. That's that's the complexity of these wines that you want, and I still get some of that tea note mm. on the yeah, back end. Totally. But yeah, like want, a little bit of that, like like how black black tea has tannin. pretty high in tannins, yes, so it makes you like uh -huh. gives you that similar feeling as like high tannin. I love wine. nothing more than I pull a cork on a wine, and, and the nose is completely different than the. Yes, oh, I love that. Too. I, yeah. I think that's Complexities. honestly yeah. one of my favorite things way, when we. It? When we first, oh, um, Sherry in Spain. yeah, oh when we God. went to Spain, we were in Malaga, I think, in Malaga. and none of us had really tried sherries all that much. And yeah. so you That's have that, you get cherries down in the south, yeah, right? yes. in that, Central um, Central. Andalusia Andalusia region. Yep. And oxidized sherries smell like it smelled like pancakes, it smelled waffle. like yes. stroop syrup. waffle syrup right. pancakes. Yeah. And I was like, oh, well, here comes a super sweet here comes sherry. <laughs> Go and you taste it, and it's salt and yeah. salt yeah. and bone dry, bone dry. Yeah. Uh -huh. and not and like I honestly got it's the biggest like high off of that. Yeah. I yeah. is something that when you said it best, yeah. when it smells completely different mm -hmm. than it tastes, it just blew my mind, my like my palate and my mind away. I was like, this is so intriguing. Like, That's how cool. do they do it? Like, yeah, it, it, yeah. it throws it's a sign it of a good winemaker. It's a sign of good grapes. It's a sign of good terroir. All these things come to play. You know, um, it's just a lot of fun. California is such a vast space yeah. you know we've got santa barbara and and in, you know the central coast and then we've got um you know monterey and, and santa cruz which are incredible oh yeah on their own right then you go to the east near uh on your way up to tahoe and you've got el dorado where this is from mm. then of course we all know about nap and sonoma, Nath and sonoma you know about right. that there's just so many cool and san diego in the south has some emerging ones yeah, too it's a lot of fun Temecula, yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely um, so and, create, yeah. and the temperatures, yeah, I mean, we get a little bit of everything here. It's, yes. <laughs> I, I tend to like the wines that stay closer to the coast or mm -hmm. higher elevation. Yeah. Because once again, it leads to lesser alcohol and yeah. higher acid. Yep. Because yeah. I like to really, I really enjoy pairing wine with food. As much as it's fun to drink wine by itself, it's so, so much what, more fun to pair. For the people totally. listening in at home, like this uh, five-day skin contact, Pinot Gris, what? This what is comes a lot mind? fresher in my opinion, than the Chardonnay. So your mm -hmm. typical like lunching, brunching kind mm -hmm. of thing, like you can bring this to brunch all Vegetables, day and you can do salads. this with salads mm -hmm. and oh, yeah. I say in the summer yeah. and mm -hmm. picnic wine kind of thing. Yeah. Pair with this any of those like high acid summer, yeah, like this this tomato, crazy balsamic. Yes. yes. That, yeah. The Chardonnay is more hearty. Yeah. The Chardonnay yeah. is a little bit more hearty and a little bit more, you know, kind of like a dinner kind of wine. A little meaty. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Whereas this one's more fresh, more vibrant, more juicy. Um, and just kind of lends itself more to daytime drinking, which I enjoy. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, that's, that's our, a, one of our favorite passions. Yeah, absolutely. Biking <laughs> around the neighborhood oh, yeah. with a few wines under the belt. Oh, I mean, on the yeah. beach cruiser. I just 100%. got one for Christmas. I mean, there's, that's no, usually, there's nothing better. That's usually where you find nothing us better. all the weekends. Us too. <laughs> yeah. We love our beach cruisers. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's right. Um, yeah, so these are it. You know, that obviously there's a lot more to it. You know, you start talking about Amphora in the old Georgian mm. way, but you know, if you're on your, you know, a date night with your boo or whatever, and you see skin contact wine or orange wine on the menu, give it a try. Give oh it yeah, a try. Um, I don't think you'll be disappointed. I agree. Also, look for the word uh, ramato, which is the Italian, no. okay. Italian way to make Pinot Grigio from way back when, where it had the skins yeah. in contact with the juice. Okay, ramato. So ramato is another way to see huh. skin contact. Well, that menu. that'll be on the li oh, on the on the um, menu or on, do you find that on the label of wines see, ever? Yeah, in fact, I believe he put it on his, or did he not? Maybe so. Yeah, you Ramato. put Ramato style. On oh, so wow. look for look That's for amazing. And it's orange wine, skin, wine skin contact, skin contact, wine. skin fermented. Skin fermented is another term. Absolutely. So, I, I have so many questions at the moment. Sure. Um, when it's five days on the skins, that's during its fermentation period. Correct. Does the, does the wine still ferment? 
post those five days after they pulled it after they like pulled it off? Their yeah, skins? traditionally, I mean, it can take. Uh, that's a good question. It it can take only five days yeah. for you know the pro- okay. for ferment to to take place. Not too. And it can take months. Yeah, for fermentation. To, it really just depends on where you are until you get it to the right. Yeah, because temperature. Point where you wanna, yeah. yeah, temperature is a big part of it. Think about you know your old science classes when things are cold. Oh, and for everybody at home who got into sourdough during the pandemic, yeah. when your starter was, whether you lived in Minnesota in the wintertime and you're trying to make <laughs> sourdough bread and it's 30 degrees outside it was versus a lot longer. you're in the desert. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And it speeds Cold up. Cold fermentation versus warm versus uh, fermentation. So yeah, it, it's a very, there are variants involved in that. Also the active yeast strain. You know, when you talk about native yeast, you really have no idea what strain of yeast is actually going to be the one to be the dominant strain that starts the fermentation process. So as a result, you know, uh, that alone can change from year to year, but that's what we like. We like people that use native yeast or wild yeast. Um, you know, those are terms you'll use to describe natural yeast Nice, because you want the vintages to be a a conversation piece. Mm. You know, you want to talk about how the 2020 was different from the 19 was different from the 18 and so on and so forth. Totally. And the yeast is a very important Mm. component of that. Not just how much rain, the terroir got or how hot it was or when they picked it you know um commercial yeast is fine if you're trying to make a consistent product some product yeah. or give it a little flavor of right or some... sometimes flavor you know things like that but if you're really trying to make something that is a conversation piece from year to year you want to keep commercial yeast as far away from your property yeah. as possible they call it wild yeast because i guess it's wild and some, it's kind of a little bit more wild it's to, a to little use. bit of a crapshoot yeah it is totally. and um, yes. but I personally love it because I feel like it's a giant part of the terroir. I hate to use that word, but like it's the flavor profile of the end product that you get. Like hundred percent, we yeah. talked about it before. That's what makes New York bagels special. That's what makes San Francisco water. sourdough special. <laughs> I mean, the water, the yeast, yeah. the bacteria yeah. in the yeah. air. So true. I I gotta admit, I I had my first adult bagel experience in in uh, New York fairly recently did it blow you away i was, was it? just like it's true <laughs> i couldn't believe it it was just i was blown away oh i love it, was it. fantastic <laughs> I, I love it i i want to touch super briefly because i know we're cutting short on time here a little bit but how is it selling so i know you have like a book of business so you're so you so you work the kind of like south bay area yeah uh repping these producers slinging them to primarily wine shops but bars and restaurants right now yeah they're starting how to is reopen? the perception to like the low intervention natural wine. Are you selling to places that only carry it? Do you find yourself like trying to talk people into it's stocking been, this? Like, is it a little battle for the people who like like yeah, natural wine out it's, there? It's been a breakthrough, big time. I mean, you have your natural wine shops that are dogmatic, um, and they only carry natural wine, and then you mm-hmm. have other places that don't want anything to do with small producers. They only want to carry the big box brands, yeah, because they're tried recognize. and true, and they are busy. And I get it. You know, you're running a business, and sometimes you know. Maybe you don't drink. Maybe you run a liquor store and you don't just to drink. make some money. Yeah. You're just doing it because it's your business and you don't yeah. care what's mm-hmm. on the shelf. <laughs> yeah. So, and that's fine by, by them as well. You know, we want everybody to succeed. But I find it really fun. And the biggest challenge is when I can break through to places that have never carried it in the past. Oh yeah. And and then these, you know, bless these open-minded buyers that want to try new things and they're yeah. willing to maybe move a legacy brand out. Yeah. Put one of these small up and comers in. I mean, shelf space is precious. So, 100%. Yeah. And so, we really got to, we've never, never given a hero award to the Troys out there. I know. (laughs) You are putting natural wine on the shelves of these traditional wine shops. One foot in front of the other. We are getting it done. Yeah. (laughs) Like, there's a lot of people in the process. Yeah. That we need to give our hats off to that get mm-hmm. natural wine under, I, into I the consumer's agree. hands. It is, and you know what? It, it is a relationship. Um, it really is from the growers, which are oftentimes not even the winemakers. These are you know men and women that are farmers. Yeah. Uh, the 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 hands that they hire to you know tend to the the vines, to the winemakers themselves, to the assistant winemakers, to the distributors, to the people like me who are actually on the street pushing the wine yeah. to the buyers and then to the people that buy the wine from the buyers like yep. yourselves. Yeah. It is all a relationship. And you totally. know, it just, it, it makes <laughs> me so happy when I see people out there drinking wine that uh-huh. I know that I, oh. I sold, but they have no idea that, but they're no. out there. And, and I mean, yeah. that's, yes. yes, it's like a small one for the good win. guys. Like <laughs> I, I would, it is. I would get jacked about that. It is. I do get jacked about <laughs> good. it. Yeah. You should. And, you know, it, it's just so fun. I mean, and these people are so great. Christy and William know each other, they're friends. Aww. And yeah, so it's just a really cool industry altogether. And, 
yeah, um, really looking forward to the rest of uh, 2021 as we start to reopen. Oh, yeah. I'm hearing here in Los Angeles Super it's going to be this weekend for indoor dining. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, oh, that'll be huge. Uh, wow. If you go out to eat, take care of the restaurants, please. Give yes. them some space. Be patient. Oh, be yeah. Patient. They That's are number very, one. Yeah. Give, thing them that lo- I've, give them lots of love. Yes. We're not in the industry, like restaurant wise, but we have friends that are. Yeah. And I just oh, yeah. know, like, it's just, give it's them some tough. love. Be patient. Them, look, be patient. They're still yep. trying. I mean, it's almost like reopening. Yeah, in many ways. It, is. Yeah. it is like, I mean, like a grand, trying to get, gather opening. their staff I again. Yeah. I mean, yeah, shout out to restaurants and, and bars. I mean, because really, like, mm-hmm. yep. what is life in the big city without restaurants and bars? Man, especially it's here in nothing. LA. We're just a bunch of idiots squished together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and here in LA in particular, I, I'm just so excited about the. I'm um, not an idiot. Uh, yes, <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I uh, Present company experience. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited about all these new restaurants that are popping up. I know. You know even through the pandemic, you know, you're seeing know. things popping up and, and, you know, chefs are collaborating. Yep. And, you know, there's pop-up shops and all sorts of cool stuff. So our food scene is fantastic. Go out and enjoy it. Wear a mask. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. We'll get through it. We'll get through it. Yep. <laughs> Wine so, helps. So yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> As we found out by those uh, wine shop numbers. Uh-huh. Yes. Um, but uh, I mean, this was amazing. This Thanks, was guys. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, Let's, uh, how do we show your brand and you some love for everybody listening? Yeah, how, how, can, we yeah. you guys? how can we support you? The, in best way, the best way to do it is just to go to your local wine shop. Um, you know, we don't sell to BevMo, unfortunately, in places like that. But it's this kind of for a reason. When you're in California, right? If you're in California, yeah. if you're listening in. And you know what? Also, go if you're in, like, major metropolitan areas and anywhere in the United States. Some of these wines are there. Okay. Um, but just ask for natural wine. Ask for small production wine. Yeah. Small production, natural wine is where you're going to get the best start. Um, if you're here in California, odds are your local boutique winery or wine shop will have Two Shepherds or Tessier. Mm-hmm. So please look them up. Go to their website, TessierWinery.com in particular. She has songs that she has curated for each bottle that you buy. So Pull amazing. the cork, listen to a soundtrack. Oh, yeah, be transported so to yeah. outer space or somewhere around the world. The or... soul love we were talking about earlier <laughs> yeah, is yeah. a David yeah. Bowie homage. It's oh. in outer space. It's a perfect. Yeah. yeah. I, well, I'm re- I need to get the, so- I need to get the Spotify playlist yes, ready. Yes, you do. Absolutely. And it looks like on Instagram, you're Alluvial Wines. Yeah, Alluvial Wine is our Instagram handle. Um, I don't think we do the best job with our Instagram, but our wineries do. Awesome. Tessier, Two yeah. Shepherds, definitely give them a follow to start. We will give them a follow for sure. Great content. You know, nice. you know, it fills your page with fun stuff. And another great one, if you're just into wine and you're kind of a novice, and I guess we all kind of are. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Wine Folly, at Wine oh, yeah. Folly. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic follow. For oh, yeah. Just yeah. daily scrolls and you stop and like, oh, this is a little blurb about Tempranillo. Yeah. Or totally. No, little, Wine Folly is great. Yeah. Constantly. Love, love Wine Folly. New information. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, awesome, this guys. has been so wonderful uh, chatting with you, Troy, and talking about orange wine. Try orange wine if you haven't. Yes. Do it. If you love it. You won't regret Keep it. Keep guzzling it. <laughs> it's delicious. Yeah. It can be guzzleable. I agree. <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, thank you, listeners. Thank you, viewers. And um, we're the Naked Wine Podcast. And have a great night. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. Cheers. Go, Natty, or go home. Peace out. <laughs> See ya. Love it. <laughs>